Surveying research involves the collection of information from a sample of individuals through their responses to questions. As you probably have observed, a great number of researchers in our cultural education, communications, extension education, and family and consumer science education choose this method of data collection. In fact, surveys have become such a vital part of our social fabric that we cannot assess much of what we read in newspapers or see in TV without having some understanding of survey research. Researchers have used survey methods to investigate areas of education as diverse as academic achievement, teaching practices, leadership, and professional development needs of teachers. Although a survey is not an ideal method for learning about every educational process or issue, a well-designed survey can enhance our understanding of about just about any educational issue. In this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about two different types of surveys, the advantages and disadvantages of survey research, and guidelines for good questions by avoiding issues of measurement error, and then the types of questions you can ask in a survey. There are two major types of surveys, descriptive and analytical. A descriptive survey attempts to just describe or document current conditions or attitudes or behaviors. That is, to just explain what exists at the moment. So for example, the Department of Labor conducts surveys on the rate of unemployment in the United States. Professional pollsters survey electorate to learn their opinions of candidates or issues. Broadcast stations and networks survey their audiences to determine their programming tastes and changes in values and lifestyle variations that can affect their programming. So in descriptive surveys, you're interested in discovering the current situation in an area under study. An analytical survey attempts to describe and explain why situations exist. And in this approach, two or more variables are usually examined to investigate research questions or to test research hypotheses. And the results allow researchers to examine the interrelationships among variables and to develop explanatory inferences. Surveys have several advantages. They can be used to investigate problems in realistic settings. You can investigate teaching strategies and teacher efficacy and student learning where it's actually happening rather than in a laboratory or a screening room in an artificial environment. The cost of surveys is reasonable when one considers the amount of information gathered. You can control the expenses by selecting from five major types of surveys mail, telephone, personal interview, group administration, internet, and those will be addressed later in this course. A large amount of data can be collected with relative ease from a variety of people. Surveys allow researchers to examine many variables, attitudes, motivations, intentions, self-efficacy, attitudes, demographics, and lifestyle information that can influence their ability to effectively teach in the classroom, to implement a learning strategy, to have students show whether they've learned from a type of teaching method. Surveys are not constrained by geographic boundaries. They can be conducted almost anywhere. However, we do have some disadvantages. It's not a perfect research methodology. The most important disadvantage is that you don't manipulate the independent variable the same that you do in a true experimental or quasi-experimental design. You can uh, assign a control variable or a treatment to uh, respondents in a survey and do more of a, an experimental design, but there are restrictions for how that can be done in a survey system like Qualtrics. Inappropriate wording or placement of questions within a questionnaire can bias results. Questions have to be worded and organized ambiguously. 
uh, and to collect data that's desired. You also can't say for sure that a dependent variable is uh, the cause or reason that something happens. Causality is very difficult to establish because the many intervening and extraneous variables are involved. Sometimes time series studies can help correct that problem, but you usually don't have that ability uh, to do a longitudinal study during a master's thesis or dissertation. The wrong respondents can be included in survey research. For example, telephone interviews, a survey respondent could claim to be 18 and 24 years old, but it may in fact be over 30 years old or may only be 16 years old. A mail survey or internet survey could be completed by a teenager when the target respondent is a parent of the household. So some survey research is becoming difficult to conduct because response rates continuously decline. This is especially true with telephone surveys, where answering machines, call blocking, caller ID, cell phones, various state and local regulations against calling people at home are affecting the response rate and who will participate in these studies. And despite these problems, surveys can produce reliable and useful information, especially useful for collecting information on audiences.